Hello, and welcome to this conversation today about always be your amazing self. Develop the skills that develop you. My name is Marcia Stonehill. I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner. The name of my practice is Melt the Ice. The name comes from a quote, sometimes it takes the sun a long time to melt the ice so things can come to the surface. As we go through this conversation today, I think the meaning behind that quote will be revealed as we talk. I also want to tell you about a podcast program I have called Operation Flow. Flow standing for fortitude, leadership, opportunity, and wisdom. This is what we have to develop in ourselves to manage the challenges that life brings our way. Life is filled with many challenges and lots of conflict because we're all very different. In this conversation today, I'm suggesting that instead of being afraid of conflict and challenges, to accept it as an opportunity, an opportunity to develop yourself and to develop your skills. What skills are we talking about? So we are in school, we learn about math and English and history and social studies and other very important subjects that we need to be successful in our life. But we also have to develop coping skills, communication skills, decision-making skills, time management skills, emotional regulation skills, just how to interact with people because of intense emotions that we all can experience at different times. So we wanna learn problem solving, conflict resolution, emotional regulation, We want to learn how to listen to that wiser part of ourselves that will keep us grounded when our emotions want to send us soaring. That's self-management. Other people can't do that for us. We have to learn how to do that for ourselves. But we're not here to function independently. We want to work together. That's the collaboration. Working together, having proper support, people that appreciate who you are, love you for who for who you are and support you. So let's melt the ice together and let's have an open and honest conversation. So in order to address conflict, we have to be able to communicate with confidence. We have to know how to manage our emotions. We have to know how to bounce back from difficult situations. Which comes first, those skills or confidence? We need confidence to develop those skills, but we need those skills to develop confidence. In my experience, we have to develop those skills, and even when we're afraid, we have to push through that fear to use those skills, and that's how we become more confident. So let's look at all the stress that we are enduring, no matter your age, you're experiencing this stress on to one degree or another. There's relationship stressors, there's misunderstandings, there's differences of opinions, there's the difficulty in appreciating the perspective of another person, there's family members or friends who might be struggling with anxiety or depression or learning difficulties or medical challenges. There may be people you know in your life who um, do a lot of gossiping, are very judgmental, are very critical, are quick to reject people. These things are hurtful. There may be a lot of demands in your life. Maybe there's financial challenges and difficulties. Maybe you're dealing with a bully. Maybe you've gone through a relationship breakup. Maybe your parents are divorced and you have to go back and forth between different homes or that was part of your experience. Maybe you're a single parent. 
Maybe you're moving. There are many, many challenges. Maybe you're trying to decide what you want to do as a career in your life. Do I want to go to college? Do I want to go to trade school? What do I want to do? Maybe you're learning how to drive. There's so many different things. You're ex perhaps we are also experiencing at different times more tragic things, deaths and losses in our lives. We've all recently been through a pandemic that turned our lives inside out, upside down and backwards. We never know what the challenge is going to be, but we do know that we can develop to the skills to manage any challenge that comes before us. Let's break it down. I like to put us into four zones. Melt the Ice looks at, we have an ego, an ego zone, we have an emotion zone, we have a mind zone, and we have a spirit zone. So let's look first at what is that wiser part of ourselves? That's what I call the spirit zone. It's that part of you that knows, mm, I need to just walk away, I need to stay quiet, I need to just get up, I need to speak up. It's concise and pointed suggestions that come from deep inside of ourself that we often don't listen to because it might be scary to do what it's asking us to do. It's critical to learn to trust that part of yourself and walk with it and allow it to, well, allow yourself to learn what that part of yourself does for you. What happens when you don't listen to the spirit zone? So we constantly have to decide, am I going to listen to my mind that might be feeling quite chaotic in that moment or to my emotions that might be intense and chaotic as well, or to my ego that has created really harmful ideas toward myself or another person? Which part of myself am I going to listen to? We can't make a once and for all decision of, okay, from this point forward, I'm going to listen to my spirit zone. And then it's just simple from that point forward. Boy, do I wish it was that way. But it's a constant decision. We are constantly managing our thoughts, our ego, and our emotions. And we want to constantly consider where is the spirit zone in all of this? Is it in timeout? Or are we listening? Has it been uh, shut down by our experiences? So let's look at that. There are things that will kind of block us from being able to remember who we are, what our strengths are, the gifts that we bring to, uh, to the table, the talents that we have. We are strong, we have talents, we have gifts, everyone does. But because we experience hardships, because we experience losses, betrayal, judgment, criticism, because we experience gossip, or because we participate in those things ourselves, it pulls us away from that spirit zone. It pulls us away from our strengths and from our gifts and our expression of those things. So we do need to be very careful about how we allow ourselves to manage all the hardships that we experience so we don't lose sight of the essence of who we are and so we can move forward one baby step at a time no matter the hardship that you're experiencing. So I'm suggesting then that you want to allow this spirit zone to be the director of your life. That's what grounds us. That's what helps us to find that mental clarity when we get mental chaos happening or when our ego has uh, developed defense mechanisms that feel protective, but it's actually separating us from our, our actual strengths and separating us from connecting with people in positive ways. 
Grounding inside that spirit zone helps us to calm our emotions. It doesn't make our emotions go away, but it helps us to manage our emotions. So things are happening around us constantly. There's always, there's always hardships and challenges, if not in our own personal life, perhaps in our home with another family member or in the school with friends or teachers or other people around us or in our communities or in our world. So there are constantly challenges that we need to have the skills to know how to respond to. So in this regard, if you're not regulating, you are reacting. So we have to be really good at being plugged in. We need to learn how to solve problems. And even though you see here that I'm suggesting that we need to face challenges without fear, we have to face challenges afraid or not. It's okay to be afraid, but don't let the fear stop you. We have to learn to manage conflict and overcome our emotional challenges. So as children, we disconnect, we unplug from stress. You know, nowadays children are doing that by escaping in video games, but sometimes people escape through reading or whatever that may be. Instead of developing more skills, it's okay to use distraction occasionally, but at some point we have to learn to plug in and develop those skills. Keep that brain alive and active and filled with knowledge that helps you know how to deal with everything you are experiencing. So what does not work when you're experiencing intense emotions? And I know that everybody has either done this themselves or has witnessed it in other people, no matter what your age is. <clears throat> but staying silent, keeping it all inside and replaying the memories inside your own mind, that's going to keep you awake at night. It's going to create anxiety, maybe even depression, restlessness, appetite problems. It's, it can just create a lot of problems to keep it all inside. Or the opposite, being emotionally overwhelmed and yelling and screaming and having outbursts or tantrums, mm, that's not really going to work either, is it? It doesn't really solve the problem. Or physical acts of slamming doors and stomping and throwing and breaking objects. Again, this doesn't really solve the problem. And it's not emotional regulation. Those are emotional reactions. <clears throat> so what do you want to do when you're having intense emotions? You want to be honest. You want to be truthful with yourself about your feelings and with a trusted friend or support team. Let's say you're feeling really, really angry about something. You want the support team to be able to listen to your anger and hear what you're angry about without them also becoming angry. How is that going to help the situation? So you need to be able to talk about the issue and see if there's a solution you can come up with. Always have that safety zone where you can share what you're experiencing without judgment. There are people out there who can give that to you and you want to be a person that gives that to others. Reflect. Describe what your emotions want to do when you're having intense emotions. So for example, if you're feeling really angry and you feel so angry that you want to punch something or you want to stomp and slam doors, you can say, I am so angry. I want to just slam doors and I want to throw my phone and just describe what the emotion wants to do without doing that. Here I do want to say, stay strong in regulating that emotion and not reacting to it. But there's a huge misconception in our society. We have this idea that you're being really strong if you don't cry. And men and boys are especially plagued with this. And that's not real. 
It's not wrong to be angry. It's not wrong to be sad or have doubts or fears or insecurities or confusion. This is all a very natural part of our human existence, or we would be a robot. It's okay to cry. It's not just okay to cry. Sometimes it's necessary to cry because that does relieve tension. So support each other when we have these safe ways of needing to release that tension that builds up inside of us because of the hardships and challenges that we have. Now, what do you do when there's intense emotions that are coming at you? Maybe somebody's calling you names, saying harsh things, mean things, judgmental things. What becomes very, very important is to not take these things personally and to not internalize it, to not believe it is true. Recognize that this person is having an emotional reaction. They are not regulating their emotion. And so therefore it's best for you to only observe what's happening, but don't absorb it. Further, a little bit deeper, sometimes we can be in a space And you can just tell something's not quite right. Something's a little off, but a person will say, no, no, everything's fine. I'm fine. Well, trust that instinct, trust that feeling and know that something's off, whether you can put your finger on it or not, it's okay. Now let's go to the mind. Our mind is very important. We can't operate without it. Sometimes it's a very busy place and sometimes it's a very quiet place. Our mind can also have a lot of rational thoughts, but it can also have a lot of very irrational thoughts or negative thoughts. Nobody likes me. I'll never succeed. I always fail at everything. I can't make mistakes. I have to be perfect. Those are irrational thoughts. These are things we can't control whether these thoughts enter our mind, but we can control how much time we spend on those thoughts, whether we believe every thought that enters our mind. We have to be very thoughtful about what we listen to. Our mind is a very powerful machine and what we tell ourselves becomes true. So we want to tell ourselves the truth. I have strengths. I have value. I am talented. I have gifts. I have friends. I have support. I am capable of finding people who will be loyal to me and treat me with respect. Being honest. So communication. There are three different ways that we identify as ways of a commu- of communicating. One is aggressive, the other is passive aggressive, and the other is assertive. Naturally, we want to always strive toward communicating assertively. This is another one of those things where we can't say, I'm always going to be assertive from this point forward. Why? Because our emotions and our ego and irrational thoughts arise and sometimes we do become aggressive or passive aggressive, but we have to take responsibility for that and always strive to move into that assertive position. So what's the difference? Being aggressive is when you might be telling the truth, but you're saying it in a really mean way by name calling or being judgmental. I want to clarify there that sometimes people think they're being mean when they're telling the truth, even in a nice way. Sometimes it's hard to tell someone the truth because it can be hard to hear. The truth should never harm us. It should help us to learn and to grow. So passive aggressive is when someone stays silent and instead of telling the truth, they just become quiet and maybe they do things that they know will hurt you, or you do things that you know will hurt this other person because you're aggravated or you're upset or you're hurt, but you don't know how to talk about it. Again, that doesn't work. 
So we do want to strive toward being assertive, which is to tell the truth, but saying it without the name calling, without the judgment, being willing to hear their perception and sharing your perception and finding that space where each of each person can feel understood. So what are things that get in the way of communication? The biggest one is defensiveness, explaining yourself instead of taking responsibility and just listening and seeking to understand. Other things that get in the way are just our fear, our fear of being judged, being misunderstood, being rejected. We create these stories, well, they're never going to listen to me anyway. They don't care. It won't work out. They're going to blow up on me. They're going to hate me. We just create all these stories that block us from speaking the truth. The other thing that blocks us from speaking the truth is we can fall into habits and patterns of blaming people for our behavior or being stuck in shame of our own behavior or shaming other people or feeling guilty or trying to guilt trip other people. Blame, shame, and guilt serve no purpose. They keep us stuck and they do not allow us to grow. The solution is to take responsibility for all of our actions and to ask for accountability from others. So what makes conflict so scary? Again, it's this whole thing that it just depends on if somebody is going to come at you aggressively or if they're going to become passive aggressive. That does make conflict scary. But we still have to do our best to communicate. We have to appreciate that all of us have different needs, different experiences, and different priorities even inside your family and especially inside your family. Just because we're family doesn't mean we think alike. <clears throat> we have to learn how to communicate through these differences. Can you take ownership of your part? Can you consider the perspective of the other person? Can you tell a person you see why they feel the way they do? And will they listen to your perspective and give you the same? Everyone in the conflict has to be willing to solve the conflict. Some people choose resentment or grudges. But even when somebody does something harmful to you, so harmful that you cannot stay in that relationship, you want to be careful to not get stuck in resentment or grudges or fears created from that experience because it'll hold you back. Don't let them hold you back. Walk away with gratitude that you had the wisdom to walk away and stay your amazing self and keep developing yourself and your skills. In this life, we're going to experience people who will have bullying type behaviors. They will try to scare us into cooperating with them or say mean things that will try to destroy our confidence or break our confidence. If you witness that happening, I want to encourage you to surround the person being bullied. Don't get into a fight with the bully. They too need to be surrounded and supported for whatever it is that's going on inside of them. But, in, but instead, surround the person being bullied and support them, build them up and see how this might help alter what the bully is doing. Relationships and communication, it's a lot of work. How do you measure a true friend? True friendship is, some pl is a person and a place where you can be who you are. You don't have to keep secrets. You don't have to not reveal certain things I don't want to tell them this because then they may not like me. Well, that, that's not a true friend if you have to hide parts of yourself from them. So being uh, the measurement of a true friend is their consideration to you, how they value you, respect you, listen to you, consider your perspective, and your ability to give them the same thing. 
If this is not happening in the relationship, sometimes we have to have the courage to walk away and say, this is just not working. We don't want to judge, we don't want to criticize, but it is okay to say, this isn't working. It's hurtful and it's harmful. We want to be in relationships where we're being supported and where we are being supportive. Pay attention in your relationships. Does this person respect your boundaries? If you say, I don't like it when you speak to me this way or when you do this, this hurts me. Are you heard? Do they listen or does the behavior continue? Always having open communication, mutual respect, always valuing who you are. Be very thoughtful. Our ego develops defense mechanisms because of these hardships and these hurtful things that happen. And some of these defense mechanisms, again, pull us further away from our own purpose and our own goals, and it pulls us away from relationships that feel good to us and supportive and encouraging. Be careful that you don't allow the hardships to create doubts and fears and keep you from your goals. Look for the lessons to be learned and keep developing yourself. Because life has hardships, the only choice that we have is to learn from these hardships. We have to learn to be resilient, bounce back, stay attached to that strength inside yourself that helps you to get through any situation. But remember, we're not here to get through situations alone and you are not alone. Make sure you have a support system. That system doesn't have to be a big support system. It can be one or two other people. As long as they're treating you with the respect and the kindness and valuing who you are and know how to encourage you. That's what matters the most. There are many mental health resources out there. You can search on the internet in your own locality for resources that are near you or ask uh, trusted adults or other individuals in in your life who may know of resources in your area to help you get the support that you need. You can talk to your physician, you can reach out to counselors, teachers, coaches, whoever it might be. The National Institute of Mental Health is a great resource to understand um, mental health conditions and ways to treat these conditions as well as prevent or minimize the impact of these conditions. Always collaborate with a trusted friend or adult. Always be your amazing self. Stay honest, real, and bounce back from all situations. You are not alone. Reach out for support.